Rebuilding a vintage open steam launch. This is part 17, setting the safety valve with the boiler in steam and test running the steam engine. This is a bit of a deja vu really, because a couple of episodes ago I steamed the boiler for the first time. But I like playing with things like this anyway, as you probably gathered. Here we go then. The first thing to do is to fill the boiler with water. I'm using my water bottle connected to a piece of silicone tubing, which as you can see is loosely pushed onto the clack but just tight enough to stop it leaking. And in no time at all, by squeezing the bottle, the water is rising up the glass. I meant to mention this a couple of episodes ago, and I don't think I did. When you're filling a boiler using the water bottle principle held against a piece of silicone tubing, you must open a valve to let the air out of the boiler, because as the water goes in, the air needs to come out. You cannot pump against any pressure with a water bottle. Well you can, but as the piece of silicone rubber is only held against the top of the bottle, you suddenly find that you have quite a lot of water in your lap. And then when you go outside the workshop, people think that you've wet yourself, which is not a good thing. So with the main steam tap open to let the air out, the water rapidly rises up the gauge glass. Do not overfill the boiler, otherwise you will get a shower bath when the safety valve blows off. Right, it's time to light the burner. And the burner's still working well. I've ordered some of this ceramic material so I can get one large piece rather than two semicircles, and it should be here on my birthday, which is next week. With this ceramic burner in its current condition, the boiler raises steam very rapidly. I'm actually quite surprised for a boiler of this size, it raises steam in no time. I wonder how quickly the boiler will raise steam when I fit the complete piece of ceramic, which actually has more holes in it which equals more flames. Will it be any quicker, I wonder? I'll find out in due course. I'm not going to keep steaming the boiler for the sake of it. I will only steam the boiler when it's necessary. So I would think that the next time I steam this boiler, after this episode of course, it will be in the boat driving the propeller. The fire has a very nice incandescent appearance, and when I look at the pressure gauge, we have some pressure. The needle has lifted off the stop, and there's about 10 psi in there. The steam that you can see moving about in front of the pressure gauge is just coming from the clack valve below it. As a clack valve is just a stainless steel ball in a housing over a hole, until there is sufficient pressure on the steel ball to hold it firmly against the hole in the fitting, there is often some leakage. And to be fair, clack valves do tend to dribble at the best of times. But normally, they're in a circuit with a pump, and the pump also has a ball valve in there, so between the two, you don't get too much back pressure. As you can see by what's on screen at the moment, the pressure is rising steadily. So what I'm going to do is give the engine a quick try on this very low pressure. Just under 25 psi on the clock, but by the time I get round to fitting a silicone pipe, I'm sure it will be slightly more than that. So I fit the silicone rubber pipe and open the valve. I only open the valve very slightly and then I give the engine a push because it's a compound and it doesn't always self start and off it goes and it's running quite well, I'm really pleased with this. It's not a good idea to use silicone rubber tubing to connect a boiler of this pressure and temperature to a steam engine, but for me it's just very convenient. So I stopped the engine and let the pressure build and as soon as the pressure got to 30 pounds per square inch the safety valve started to blow off. This is approximately where I set the safety valve using compressed air. But even though the engine runs quite well at 25 psi, I need it to blow off a lot higher than that. So I'm using my small set of circlet pliers that are used for this purpose to tighten the inner spring tensioning ring. So now it's blowing off around 40 pounds per square inch, but that's still not high enough. So I'm going to tighten the adjusting ring with my circlet pliers one more time. And I'm so confident that this is the right setting, once again this is from experience, that I tighten the outer locking ring. And this will prevent the inner spring compression ring from vibrating loose as the safety valve blows off. And the good news is, it's blowing off at the correct pressure. If I have a quick look at the pressure gauge, it's at 80 psi. The safety valve blows off and the pressure drops to around about 65 psi before the safety valve snaps shut and in no time at all, the boiler pressure is back to its target of 80 pounds per square inch. 
I don't like this steam valve very much. It's really difficult to open it because it's so small and of course it's very hot indeed. I may change this valve yet. Time will tell. Or I might just put a bigger hand wheel on it. On this second run of the steam engine, it's still running very well and I'm quite pleased with it. And the engine seems to be quite economical as far as steam consumption is concerned. If you look at the boiler's pressure gauge, it's not making much difference to it. As this open steam launch is a sort of an African Queen type model, in fact it does look quite like African Queen, it's definitely not a flash steam hydroplane. So what I'm looking at at the moment with the pressure relative to the speed of the engine, and do bear in mind that the valve on the outlet of the boiler is just cracked open, it's not open very much at all. I did try opening the valve slightly more to let more steam to the engine, but all that happened was the silicone rubber piping flew off the engine. And as it passed my hand, it left a nice mark. So that means the steam's hot enough, it's not the best way to test it, but the steam really is very hot that's coming out of this boiler. I'm pleased that the superheater works, or should I say steam dryer, as one meticulous viewer reminded me. Something must be happening with this boiler, because when I put my hand over the chimney, there's not a great deal of heat coming up the chimney, so the heat has been absorbed from the burner, in the tubes, and on the superheater. And what's coming out of the top of the chimney is not very hot at all, really. I think that this rebuild is going to work very well. The boiler's a little ramshackle looking, like from the film The African Queen, and the engine rattles when it's running, again, like in the film The African Queen. So when it's all back together, it should be quite an interesting model. I'd just like to make a few points about gas-fired boilers. This of course is a gas-fired boiler, that is obvious. And the problem with gas-fired boilers is that the fuel, the liquid gas in the canisters, after a very short while, starts to get colder and colder and colder. Because the gas is constantly evaporating. So what I'm doing here is changing the gas for a new canister which is not cold. And suddenly it's obvious the burner burns a lot brighter. And when I look back at the pressure, it's charging up the gauge now. The pressure is climbing much faster than it did with the other canister because that was very, very cold due to the evaporation as I've just mentioned. And in no time at all, the boiler blows off with a very slight pop before it does so. There's one really curious trait with safety valves and that is that when you first set them up they will blow off from the pressure that you set them and the pressure drops quite away and then as they get used to the boiler the ball reseats earlier so they don't lose as much pressure and I really don't know why this is like at the moment suddenly just before blow off time you get a little pop like a and then the safety valve blows off fully. And this is making a lie out of me because it's not doing it now. For the intended application of this boiler, if it blew off just as it's doing at the moment and cut back in at that time, that would be fine. I've turned the gas off because the water in the water gauge is below the bottom nut. But when I depress the clack valve with a piece of brass wire, that's pushing the ball off the seat. As you can see, there's still plenty of water in the boiler so the gauge glass gives a very conservative reading, just in case you allow the water to drop below the bottom nut. And of course the other good thing is that the mix of steam and boiling water from the clack valve going all over the bench allows for a very easy clean-up to get rid of all the mess that the engine made on the bench. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.